Thank you very much, Alex. Uh, I will try to show you the next generation of the, in order to visualize the parathyroid glands. And, uh, you know, I wanted to discuss with you and to, to fight with you that, um, and to try to convince you that the ICG is not useful for, to see the parathyroid glands, but I cannot fight anymore because you're going to be part of I our trial. It. I so <laughs> I cannot fight with you anymore. So if we look at, uh, uh, let's uh, talk about a little bit about what's the importance of the parathyroid glands identification. And then uh, I will try to review it uh, the papers that are written uh, with ICG. And then let's talk about the autofluorescence of the parathyroid glands in normal glands and also in abnormal glands uh, with, uh, in the adenoma. If we look back at the history and we uh, make a review about the parathyroid glands, uh, we need to name Sandstrom. Sandstrom was a medical student that studied for three years uh, the parathyroid glands. He, he dissected cats, then dogs, then rabbits, and then humans. And he described four glands that were located uh, in both sides of, of the neck. They're, they were very tiny uh, and color glands. And after a couple of years was Herbert uh, Evans who described the vascularization of the glands. And for us, this is really very important because if we damage or injure the, the um, vessels, then we are going to have an hypocalcemia. So also we need to know about the embryology of the glands. And the reason is because it is not the amount of glands that we are going to have and the location of the glands, it's not constant. So we are going to see that different percentage of the localization of the glands and the amount of glands. And we know that in the 90% of the cases, we are going to find four glands, but also we may find three glands in the neck and sometimes uh, five glands. And as you see there, the color is really very similar to the color of the thyroid gland. So the intraoperative parathyroid glands identification is really very challenging, even for experienced surgeons. And it is uh, very difficult to find them because of the small size of the glands, their proximity to the thyroid gland, the similarity of the glands with the surrounding fat tissue, and the anatomical variation of the glands. We have different methods that were described and, uh, in the literature and that we use in order to localize the glands, but always, almost for abnormal glands, not to normal glands. And as you can see, the sensitivity of the different methods is around 70 and 